This science fiction narrative unfolds in a richly detailed galactic setting where various alien species interact at a grand assembly. The focus is on the introduction of humanity to this interstellar community. Human Ambassador Kenneth presents Earth and human evolution in a manner that astonishes and sometimes intimidates the alien delegates. Finally, the story has a tragic end to lead you to surprise as well as honor. Let's begin. Those were the people who contributed to the investment as part of the strategy. In addition to their power and knowledge, the Kavar are renowned for their ruthlessness, cunning, and might. In comparison to the galaxy's average of around 10 million revolutions, mankind was able to go from the earliest evolution of our homeworld to space travel in just 4 million planetary cycles. This was a lightning-fast procedure. The Galactic Council had spent a large amount of time analyzing the superiority of their worlds over that of other planets before making its decision. It was well acknowledged across the galaxy that they were a formidable force. The Sweet Teenagers, a quadrupedal race that resembles squids and relies on Mercury as a biological system for nourishment, have claimed that planet categorization has a significant impact on the pace of species evolution. For example, they found that the crosslands, a sort of enormous crab hexapoda, evolved on a neutral planet. Even though the crystalline had to face problems caused by their growth into immense size in order to defend themselves from predators, they eventually succeeded in outperforming their contemporaries in the food chain and gaining reputation. On the other hand, unlike the other members of their species, the Cavera developed on a planet that is thought to be deaf. The inference is that their forefathers had to depend on their inherent ingenuity to thrive on a world crowded with life. As a result of these changes in biology that happened during evolution, their already resistant carapaces' arms became even more pointed, like to rough blades. The five main categories were the garden world, the tranquil planet, the neutral planet, the deep world, and the hell world. Each category has ten subcategories. Although more challenging at first, the classification procedure eventually grew easier since the subclassifications ranged from 1 to 10. Today, the glamorous Imperial Galactic Hall was busy with activity as prominent personalities prepared to welcome the newly arriving humans. They were anxious to see this new race's abilities themselves. The Kava, like most other species, dwelt around the galaxy's core. However, since humans originated in such a distant galaxy, neither side was aware of the other's existence, and contagious air of anticipation swept across the galaxy as delegations and royalty arrived one by one from various corners of the galaxy. Even powerful people like them were unable to get a considerable amount of information about this new species, and what little information they did obtain was troubling. It was almost time to guess about the humans and everyone was excited to talk about it. He aggressively moved to the middle of the room as the speakers from the hall entered. He then spoke wonderfully into the microphone, which he knew was hovering nearby. He introduced himself to the crowd, saying, I once again welcome you or welcome you to this humble abode if it is your first time. Today we have a special case, and that would be the humans who developed in a very isolated part of space. We only found them due to an error in one of our broadcast relays, which only happened to cast some weak signals. However, a new race in our council brings new opportunities and thus we have all gathered once more. There was excitement in the air. The aliens, on the other hand, were taken aback by this human's tremendous stature. They did, in fact, have persons of bipedal races among their ranks. He was a little bipedal person. On the other hand, you won't believe this. The evolution of walking on two legs is really more distinct than the development of never having eyes at all. The human race was also quite tiny in compared to other races that lived across the cosmos. It was evident that there was a preference for larger bodies, even among the fifty or so species that were around the same size as humans. Hello all races, my name is Kenneth and I will be the human diplomat sent by our world to give the most basic rundown on how humans got to where they are today. I have gone through the effort of converting some of our units into your units so it will be a little easier to understand. The alien races were a little humbled by the good nature of this small creature, 
as no other race had ever thought of converting units to make it easier for others. As soon as the humans began speaking, a holographic screen appeared behind them, and smaller displays appeared in front of each visitor, allowing them to better view what was being given to them. We the human race evolved in our homeworld, which we call Earth. It is the third planet in our solar system, which has eight planetary bodies, a yellow star which we call a sun, and two dense asteroid fields. Our homeoplanetary gravity is apparently very heavy when compared with the other member states present here today. This is our gravity equation, equals gm over r caret 2. Using the gravity of the Horaldans or Homo's gravity is roughly 2, 3, 3, 4 times stronger. The leaders of this nation hotted lens because they came from a civilization where death existed and their weight was regarded extremely seriously. The human continued. Human life evolved to accept hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, as well as trace amounts of minor elements. Our species actually went through several evolutions before ending up as what you see standing before you. We humans believe we evolved from an omnivore on our planet called a monkey. Our species used to hunt in the savannas of one of our continents shown here. He points at a map on the hollow screen. However, the area soon dried and our monkey species were forced from the safe trees we were used to hiding in and forced to the ground. However, those monkey ancestors decided to stay walking on land instead of the trees and eventually evolved to stand upright and be able to run short distances in a burst of speed. The human looked around as he gathered their attention and continued. From here, it is believed we have all to take the constantly burning heat on our bodies by evolving to have less hair, as well as evolving to give us much better stamina as well as mutation that almost no other animal on our planet has, which is sweat. We humans sweat out water and a salt compound from our bodies, which in turn cools us as we run, escape, fight, etc. This built our species into a hunting strategy that we call persistence hunting. We can target a game for the day and running after it, until it becomes so exhausted from running from us that it eventually collapses. Many in the council had ashen faces as they heard this, as this was something no other race has ever developed to evolve with. This is a... The notion was absolutely unfamiliar to them. Imagine you are an athlete who is always outrunning your target. Stupor is a state of mind. The human, noticing all the commotion from his last words, smirked a bit and said, And calm down, ladies and gentlemen, for we are just getting started. Where was I? Oh yes, because we evolved to have such high endurance, we as a people started to wander further and further away from where we evolved. We had no natural borders as with just a little time. We would adapt to the environment as if we were born there. This time period was known as our hunter and gatherer phase. For over 2.3 million years, all we did was run after our prey to catch, eat food we picked ourselves from plants and trees and slowly cover the globe as our tribes got more and more apart. After those million or so years, we get to about 300,000 years ago, where it is believed that the most recent evolution occurred, which gave us our heightened intelligence and created what we know today as the modern human. Of course, we have gotten better over the centuries, with better food, exercises, sports, and the like, however, this is for all intents and purposes the last known evolution that mankind received. The hall was definitely quiet as the human paused, took a sip of water that was next to him, and cleared his throat. He concluded by saying, on to the pressure of all the gazes, from this period on, humans start to advance as a society, and because all of our people are so far apart, every group had to do their own research which meant that things were often invented twice or similar things would be made. They were functional, looked different from the other. But this also meant that the stuff that didn't work was thrown away, and the inventions that did work were kept and expanded up. It is one thing to make a discovery and then lose sight of it, but it is absurd to believe that a civilization could face the same important difficulty three times in a row without support from outside sources. The Kavar and the stairs found it incredibly difficult, if not impossible, to converse with their scientists and experts when together. 
One of the experts was coming frantically speaking. We ever see some news from the galactic I see, sir. They have said that they have reviewed all the materials the humans sent over for the classification of their planet, and even though they haven't gone through half of the stuff sent it, is already most definitely a hell world classification. The high standing official's eyes nearly burst out of their sockets when he heard that, and Holly replied, Get this information to the High Father immediately. Same word to the Queen Mother as well. The expert then shook his carapace vigorously to try and shake the nervousness away and said, Oh, so the human head basically just told us it took his pieces too. Three million years to reach a modern human, and it's only been 300,000 years since then. The highest ending official Scott replied, I know I'm not deaf, I had him say that. What of it? The official was extremely stressed, thinking of all the meetings he would need to attend to even begin to deal with these humans. The expert was anxious that he had offended the official in some way, so he said, Wow, sir, wouldn't that mean that their species will all be spacefaring within 2.6 million years? After a brief pause, the official sought to recollect what the guy had said. As he stated his agreement with the scientist's opinion, his expression got more serious. Because of his anxiousness, he continued to ask and seek answers, which allowed him to advance to his present position. As he hit the buzzer next to him, the speaker was cut off and a light went out in the crowd. The audience was on the edge of their seats as they waited to find out who had disrupted the fantastic introduction. However, their nerves quickly turned to swallows as they saw the Kavar official rise to her feet and ask, Human Kenneth, I have a question for you. Kenneth, unfazed and intelligent, responded, What is the question? The official continued, you said that your species started to evolve from monkeys around 2.3 million years ago and into what you call the modern human around 300,000 years ago, correct? To which the human nodded and responded, Yes, sir. Humanity has gone after some consideration. The human delegate finally spoke up, saying, Yes, I believe so. Earth has a longer rotational period than your Kavar's homeworld, if I remember correctly. I believe it would be around 1.8 billion years converted into your home planet's time scale. At this point, the entire audience began to argue with each other, and the debate quickly escalated to a boiling point. The host did nothing more than shrug his shoulders as the human gazed at him with both caution and wonder. As the man raised his eyes to the rafters of the races visible in his field of vision, he prepared to cry, Quiet. A number of various ethnic authorities are either cowering or passing out as a consequence of humans' harsh show of dominance. The human delegate inhaled deeply and spoke in a composed manner, explaining, Yes, I understand this may come as a shock, but it's true. Please remain calm, though, because I have some planet-related information that I think some of you would find interesting. At the very least, it would appease the Paul Germans, who have been attempting to introduce a worm virus into our network for quite some time. Several in the audience looked over at the free Pole German diplomat. The Polterans were ethereal beings with incredible computing capabilities. A lot of individuals in the crowd eventually realized that Pauldrons were there. The Pauldrons were highly regarded as the most trusted group for any and all computing-related concerns. They were able to destroy hostile hardware while leaving no trace, ensuring that the opposing side would not be aware of the assault until it was too late to stop it. Our homeworld, as previously stated, has at least twice the gravity of any of the other races present here today. Earth has regular storms with many different special classifications, such as hurricane or tornado. It is also home to tectonic activity which is where the cross of the plant is fractured into different splinter pieces that slowly move onto the ground, resulting in fissures, tsunamis, earthquakes, and volcanoes. This guy grinned and said, Yes, sir. In an effort to avoid staring at the terrifying grin the human was wearing, the Kavar delegate managed to ask, Human Kenneth, please, Paris, this troll, and tell us directly what the classification of your planet is. I do not want to spend all day in this hall, you know. The Kevar lied through his teeth, having set aside numerous days for this particular event, 
and his only motivation was to quickly obtain the information the Kafar required. The guy then tightened his jaw and swallowed his dissatisfaction before saying, Very well, we have calculated our homework to be a Class 7 hell world. Throughout the talk, the audience remained immobile. They are all still reeling from the unbelievable charge made by the human, and they can't wait for the Kavar representative to refute it. After hearing his counselor assert that people live in a bad world, the Kavar delegate was unable to refute the remark. A few people in the hall began to feel uneasy and quickly told their respective superiors about the new information they had discovered. When the Kevr was unable to update the human's classification of the planet, the scientist kept a close check on him as he read out the directives given to him by his master, who was now meeting with the High Father. The Kevar delegate took a deep breath of fresh air as he glanced down at the human, who resumed his presentation, and yelled out, Senior Delegate Restrict, High Favor started the mobilization for a preemptive war on the humans. He says that humans are such an extreme threat to our superiority, then they need to be wiped out as soon as possible. And if they are allowed to continue to grow, they will all become undefeatable soon. Now let's continue. The speaker said with a smile. And next up, I have given you a list of the top 200 apex predators that humans have or use to compete with for ultimate survival. Is it possible that one of these apex predators has evolved simply by being with us for many years? The idea of 200 such creatures coexisting on a single planet stunt the audience and during the time when the Kava were plotting their covert conflict, the guy who was accountable for it stood in the middle of the room and fought to himself in a thoughtless manner. I hope we don't screw this galaxy too much. 